Alex the Dragon Trainer, Bedtime Story Today we have a book named Alex the Dragon Trainer, Bedtime Story. I think they're so pretty, I hope you guys really enjoy it. I love it. Please give this video a like if you enjoy it, and don't forget to subscribe for more stories. Thank you, reading. So, here we go. The kingdom of Arlena was the richest in the realm. It flourished thanks to the magical crystal orb of Arlena, which stood on a golden stand. Its powers protected the people and the land, and it was guarded night and day, of course. Alex, our main character, lived in Arlena and spent his time training and playing with his dragon. Dragons could be stubborn, so Alex had to be the sort of kid who didn't give up easily, but he loved his dragony pals. No one else felt the same about Alex's dragons, though. In fact, they thought they and Alex were, well, a bit of a joke. Still playing with those flea-bitten old lizards jeered one villager. Pyra, one of his dragons who was very good at snorting fire, puffed a peevish lick of flame out of her snout. Ah, you couldn't light a birthday cake candle with that. Alex knew that Pyra could have lit up the gentleman in question quite nicely, but that she was too polite. An old burrow claw. Digging for bones, are you? Burrow claw, who had very good claws, had in fact been digging for bones, but there was no need to be so mean about it. And Cyrena. I mean, what's the use of a sea dragon in the middle of the driest desert on the planet? So you get the idea? There was one more dragon, in fact, a very little sparrow dragon called John. He was so small and shy and actually pretty cute, but to be honest, he was a bit of a scaredy cat, or should that be scaredy dragon, and hid in the shadows so much it was easy to forget he was there. But one bright summer's day, dragons were the last thing on anyone's mind. A thunderous storm had sprung up and lightning flared. The evil sorcerer Malazar, the shadow weaver, swooped down with his army of dark night, defeating the guards, and snatched the magical crystal Arlena orb. His voice boomed out. You will wither and die until you vow to serve me. I shall be your ruler. The orb is mine. Then he did a massive evil laugh, like baddies always do. You can join in on this bit. Ready? Oh. <laughs> that was very good. Well done. Anyway. So the orb had gone. The villagers were scared. Away from the light, it will lose its powers and the whole kingdom will perish. It was said it was hidden in the depths of the Temple of Gods, an enormous structure with caverns and tunnels and strange gates and traps. No one who had ever gone in had ever come out. Sure enough, with the passing days, the clouds gathered and the sun weakened. The crops began to fail and the people gathered shivering in their home. All is lost, they wailed. They thought there must be no other choice than to do as Malazar said and accept him as their new terrible ruler. But one person hadn't given up. Like I said, dragons can be pretty stubborn, and if you just gave up, you wouldn't even get them to sit up and beg. It was Alex. We have to at least try to get the orb, he said with determination. He was fed up with everyone thinking he and his dragons were useless. Come on, let's show them. The dragons eagerly roused themselves and jumping on Burrowclaw's back, they were off. Inside the temple, it was gloomy and cold. Pyra blew fire to light the way and Alex saw three mystical gates each representing an element, earth, water, and fire. Gulping, Alex stepped forward. Come on, let's go! At the earth gate, 
they found themselves trapped in a labyrinth of moving walls. As they tried to move forward, the walls creaked and shifted and tried to squash them at every turn. Burrow Claw, get digging, shouted Alex, and the dragon began to tunnel underneath the labyrinth. And they threw themselves down and down, then up, and they were free. Next, the water gate. Stepping through, they were faced with a fierce whirlpool. Serena, help us! And Serena blew a protective water bubble big enough for all of them, and they were through. The fire gate was a blazing inferno, but Pyra created a path of cooled lava, allowing them safe passage. They had done it. They were in the deepest depths of the temple. In the damp cavern, they saw a glimmering light. It's the orb. Not so fast. There was a flash of light and Malazar appeared, blocking their way, holding his magic staff. With a swish and a pow, he cast it, and a pow, he cast it, and Alex, Pyra, Burrowclaw, and Sirena were frozen. His pointed staff fixed them to the floor, and they couldn't move a muscle or a wing. ha <laughs> laughed Malazar. You thought you could get past me. The orb is mine now. Your people must all worship me if you want to see a glimmer of its light ever again. Frozen and terrified, Alex thought it was all over, after they'd tried so hard. But there was another dragon. One who often got forgotten about. John, the sparrow dragon, was so small and quiet, he had been hidden in the shadows, unseen. He was a scaredy cat, or a scaredy dragon, but he knew he had to do something. Gathering up all his courage, he flew at the sorcerer like a demented bat. What the... Care off, spluttered Malazar, waving his hand around. But it was no good. John was just too fast and could barely be seen in the dark. He swooped and pecked and managed quite a good few puffs of smoke that got in his eye. Clawing at his face, Malazar dropped the staff, which clattered to the ground, its glow ebbing away. The spell was broken. With John still pecking and swooping, Alex ran forward and grabbed the orb, and then leaping to Burrowclaw's back, they flew out of the temple, pro-sending clouds of flames in their wake, which made the temple walls crumble. Malazar the Shadow Weaver would now be forever. And the orb, now out in the light, regained its powers, and the sun began to stream down onto the villagers, and people came out of their houses curiously, and began to cheer as Alex and his dragons landed gently on the ground. You've saved us all. How can we ever repay you? Alex shrugged. Just... Be nicer to my dragons, maybe. Without them, we'd be bowing down to old Mankey Malazar. And that's what happened. From then on, people were much kinder to Burrowclaw, Pyra, and Sirena, and little John the Sparrow Dragon. John was now occasionally now seen out of the shadows, perched happily on Alex's shoulder, even if he was still a bit of a scaredy cat. Or should that be scaredy dragon? What do you think? The end. Good job, friends. Thank you so much for reading with me. Bye, I'll see you next time.